so my game is a Simon Says activity that displays these buttons in a certain order and the user has to type in the order that they displayed in. So the first thing you have to do is create four backgrounds. One that kind of gives the basic instructions for how the game works. The next that asks them, do they remember the order? Which is the screen where they will type in their answer. And then here's the answer screen. And then there's a you win screen. So I use six sprites in all, and I have four button sprites, and each button is a circle. It's just a circle with a primary color. And each of these circle sprites has two costumes. One is just the regular circle, but the second one, the circle is a lighter shade, but it has a ring around the edge, which is the shade that the button originally was. Um, and to do this, I just made a bigger circle and then sent it to the back. So each of these sprites, button sprites, have that two costumes. But I also have a ready button, which is just a rectangle with the word ready, and a ready for answer button, which is also just a rectangle with writing. So the first thing you have to do is set the background to go to background one when the green flag is clicked so that it just goes there when it's clicked. So the next thing you have to do is set the buttons to where you want to go. I already dra have them dragged into the place where I want them to go, so I just have the when green flag is clicked and go to this X and Y position, which just automatically generates to where I already have it. And I'm also going to have them switch to their first costume, which is just their regular button. So you do the same thing for all of them so that all the buttons go where you need to go. Where they need to go. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is make sure they display in the order that you want them to display in. So my order I chose was um, red, yellow, blue, yellow, red, green, blue, green, red. So how I have it is just when the space bar is clicked, they'll run, at, like each one will switch costumes and then go back for 0.5 seconds and then go back back to the original costume after a certain amount of time has passed. So red is the first one we're going to do, or I'm going to do in my the color order that I chose. So then when space key is pressed, you're going to wait one second. You're going to switch to costume two, and you're going to wait 0.5 seconds and then switch back to costume one. So here, so that's for how the red one works. And so to get to the rest of the one, the rest of them to work, you do the same thing, except for this one, you're just changing the amount of time it takes. So for the second one, which would be yellow, you go and you have the same when space bar is clicked, but this time you have it wait two seconds because it's the second one and then you again switch to costume two and then back to costume one after half a second so my colors I have are nine they'll go flash nine different times um so if you have to follow the order. So now I'm doing blue. And then wait the half a second. And switch back. So as you start to go back to colors that you've already done, like here I'm doing yellow 
for the fourth one, but I already did it. You can just duplicate it and then change the second to it to four seconds. So same again, I'm going back to red. So and I duplicate it and then I make it five seconds. And then green. So when spacebar is clicked. You want to use spacebar so that they can the like person playing the game can look at it as many times as they want to because because they're supposed to remember it so they need as much time as they need to memorize it so this is six And so the rest of them, I already have it, so it's super easy to just duplicate it. So we go back to blue, and it's seven, and then to green for eight, and then you finish off with red at nine. So when they press the space bar, they flash in that order. And the ring around the buttons kind of make it look like they're flashing, like they're actual buttons, like that you would see on a real Simon Says like, game pad. So the next thing you do is with this ready button, you want it so that if the user is touching this, they it'll bring them to the next screen. So what you have to do is first when backdrop switches to backdrop one, which is the first background that the that it goes to when you press screen, you want it to show. And then when backdrop switches to backdrop five, it says five, but it's really just the next background. You want to hide the button. So when backdrop switches to backdrop one, you want to repeat forever and then if this sprite the ready button is touching the mouse pointer and you're in a switch backdrop to backdrop five which again is the next backdrop even though it's not two and then you want to stop all because you after it moves to backdrop five you don't want it hides this, but the button's still there, so you don't want, like, if your mouse is here and you're on a different screen, you don't want it to take you to backdrop five. So you have to stop all. So, you know, if they can look at this if ready, if they want to, but they can just look at this and it moves them to the do you remember the order. So now, as you can see, you have to hide each button once you move it to the next screen. So when backdrop switches to backdrop five, hide. But also because you're hiding them, you want them to show when it switches to that first backdrop. So you have to do that too. And so you just do the same thing for all of them, all four of the buttons. So now, if you have it like this, and then you go here, they go away. So now you want to set up your answer. So you go to backdrop, and you go for to your code for your backdrop. And then you go to when backdrop switches to backdrop 5, which is this background. 
you want to ask them a question and wait. So I said type in the order, but you can prompt them however you want. So now it has a space bar. And so whatever they type in is stored in answer, which is over here. So now we're going to do the ready for answer button. And if you've noticed that at, from the beginning, it shows up, but we don't want that. So we're going to have a one by backdrop switches the backdrop one. We're going to hide it. And then when backdrop switches the backdrop two, you're also going to hide it because backdrop two is the background where it shows you the answer. So it's kind of like how we hid this button on backdrop five, but you're going to do this for this button for backdrop two. And so now you actually have to show it on backdrop five. So show, and then you're going to repeat forever. And then if this is what you also already did for the ready button, but if it's touching mouse pointer, I'm going to switch to backdrop two, which like we already have, will hide this button. So you can go there and go there or not. Okay. Okay. Shelf. Okay, it it should work. It's just not working right now. But like it'll work eventually. Okay. So then you have to check if they actually got the answer right. So when backdrop switches to backdrop two which is right now. Um you want to have an if else statement and you're going to have the comparison operator equal the equal one and you're going to have answer cuz it's stored it's storing the answer and then you type it out the order. I did it with capitals and commas so that when the user types it in, that's what they have to type it in as or else it's going to say they got it wrong, even if they got the answer right. And you can, there are other ways to do it. Like you can have it for multiple things that there, you accept multiple inputs, but I just have it this one way with proper grammar. So then you're going to switch to backdrop three, which is the you win answer. And then the you switch to backdrop. So it should look like this, like you can press the space bar and then the colors go off and they can do that as many times as they want. So after this one, if it's over and they still haven't memorized it, they can press it again and then it works. So then you can ready and then you can type in whatever. I don't actually want to type it in. But yay. And that's still not working. Okay. Okay. It, I don't. It should work. I. Okay, it, oh, okay, that worked. One backdrop. So it works, it's just being so fun right now.
Hmm. Okay. Well, it works. Kind of. Um. Okay. Yeah. That's definitely not right. But Oh, you can also set the position for these buttons like you did with the these but yeah okay i swear it works just like i need like a second just a second so i don't know why it wasn't working on the other one but here it's exactly the same thing but it does work so here's just like um what the finished product looks like so it flashes the buttons and, you know, again, they can do it as many times as they want. I'm only going to do it once because I know the order. So then you go ready. And then I, again, don't want to type this. So you can have it. And yay, you win. Or if you don't type anything in here, it just tells you the answer. Or if you type in the wrong answer... It also tells you the answer, but, um, you can kind of cheat, um, you know, if you look at here and then, cause it tells you the answer and then you're like, oh, cool. So then you type in the answer following the screen and then, oh, okay. No, no, wait. Yeah, even though you can kind of, like, ready for answer, even though you already have the answer, if they type it in after, they can still win. But, yeah, I like winning, so there is a way to win without actually winning. Okay, that's it.